Thank you to SimThick, accessible via sim.gg, for the weapon stats used in making this video. Link in the description. In this video, I will cover the bullet hose assault rifles in Battlefield 5, the M2 Carbine, and the M1907 SF. These weapons boost the assault class's abilities in getting in close and aggressive, which tend to be the most useful for when you get on a point or need to quickly dispatch nearby infantry as you sneak up on a tank. These two assault rifles are essentially SMG wannabes. When using them, you should build your class around the idea that you will be spending a lot of time in close quarters, while having a backup long-range sidearm for times when you have to pass through open areas to reach an objective. Being assault rifles, they will still perform better than SMGs beyond 10 meters, in part because of their damage over range. And in the case of the M1907, it will even outclass most SMGs within 10 meters because of its raw time to kill. Much like the workhorse assault rifles, you should choose the vehicle buster combat role, and for similar reasons. These weapons are good for clearing areas of infantry that are close to a tank before setting out to bring the tank down. The most effective way to rapidly take down tanks as an assault player is to get in close and use the lunge mine to bundle grenade to piat combo, and these weapons provide an excellent means of achieving that. The gadgets needed for that combo are what I suggest for both weapons when using them on vehicle maps. In maps without an emphasis on vehicles, or no vehicles at all, my suggestions become more complicated. For the M2, go for the same combo I suggested for the workhorse assault rifles. Frag grenade, piat, and frag rifle. This selection can work well to flush targets out of cover, and if you are lucky, towards you in a sprint allowing you to bullet hose them with less risk. My suggestions, however, change for the M1907. I instead suggest the incendiary grenade, piat, and pistol flamethrower. The piat can still work as your means of flushing targets out of cover quite nicely on its own, and the generally poor ammo reliability of the M1907 makes it more important for you to be able to quickly defend yourself with walls of fire if you empty out your magazine in the heat of battle. My suggested sidearm for these two weapons is also different for each. For the M2, I suggest the Ruby. My reasoning is that the M2 has fairly good ammo reliability and a reasonable time to kill. It can even work reasonably effectively at longer ranges despite the lower damage and high effective recoil due to its overall high rate of fire. This effectiveness over range, owing mostly to the fact that a sheer volume of fire can help in landing a sufficient number of shots to take a ranged foe down if they aren't paying attention, are in the open, or staying still. So much like the workhorse assault rifles, you won't really need an alternative primary weapon for the bullet hoses particularly badly. So while it won't be needed often, the ruby makes the most sense. Its best in class swap time is the main draw, shared by the Type 94, but what makes it a better choice than the Type 94, in this case, is that it has larger magazines. Normally this wouldn't be as big of a deal compared to the Type 94's improved damage model, but because the M2 deals less damage per bullet than other options, and both the M2 and Ruby share the same minimum damage, they are fairly synergistic. The sidearm I suggest for the M1907 is the Model 27. The M1907 technically has the fastest time to kill of all assault rifles at all ranges, but in reality, the high rate of fire and much more significant recoil make its time to kill much slower in practice. The inaccuracy of the gun typically resulting in an empty magazine with a long reload ahead of the user, and a now at best slightly damaged, alerted enemy if the weapon is used at ranges beyond 30 meters. The Model 27 will be your temporary primary in open areas, typically between capture points. The Model 27 can't compete with primaries that are actually effective at longer ranges, however, so engage with the enemy only if you must. Since the M1907 works best if you have teammates around to back you up to cover up for its poor ammo reliability, the stealthy alternative primary sidearm, the well rod, is much less useful. As for sights for both the M2 and M1907, I strongly suggest the NIDAR sights to cover for the recoil owing to both weapons' high rate of fire. As for upgrades, in both cases you want to build them into oversized SMGs that they aim to be. 
Bucking the typical suggestion of quick aim for assault rifles, I suggest left left right for both weapons. This actually results in the same upgrades for both weapons as well. Slings and swivels, enhanced grips, polished action, and lightened stock. This makes them both hip fire powerhouses that if you find yourself needing it, you can ADS stock corners in a more conventional assault rifle manner. The sling and swivels upgrade will also make it more forgiving to sprint around the map to close in on the distance and help cover for the M1907's poor ammo reliability by giving you faster swap times. One can make the argument that they are still better going on all of the right side of the tree. Being assault rifles, aimed fire is more the purpose of the gun class at large. However, this defeats the point of specifically using bullet hose assault rifles outside of simple preference. There is the argument that the M1907 needs every bullet to land to make up for its ammo issues, so you can access the impressive time to kill. But this simply results in a less practical workhorse than the actual workhorses, the 1.5 and the STG-44, with really what amounts to a gimmick that offers no unique tactical opportunities to the assault class itself. Speaking of tactics, you can generally get away with sprinting more with this setup, allowing you to more aggressively seek capture points and still be able to handle enemies you sprint into a tad more effectively. However, with the M1907, you should still stick to your team's main force and once in more open areas, swap to the Model 27 I suggested earlier to cover longer sight lines. Otherwise, generally try to stick to well-covered areas for both weapons. Against some SMGs within ranges of 10 meters and all shotguns, you will still be outclassed to a degree in terms of time to kill. So be wary of that risk and try to give corners a somewhat wider berth when reasonable than you might naturally be inclined to do so with shotguns and SMGs. You can get away with mag dumping and pre-firing with the M2. It features the fastest empty reload of all assault rifles at just a smidgen over 3 seconds, and its tactical is second best among assault rifles. The M1907 on the other hand needs to be fired with more care. Its reload speeds are the second worst in the class on both counts, and its magazine size is painfully small. Since you'll be in close quarters, have your flamethrower and incendiary grenade at the ready to cover for your slow and frequent reloads. As previously stated, the M1907's time to kill is best in class, and while the M2 isn't on that same level, technically being slower than the Sturmgewehr 1.5, it's fast enough with a consistent stream of rapid fire damage that you should be able to get down most enemies before they even know what hit them. You shouldn't be too conservative with these guns, as you want to take advantage of the strength that comes from not needing to be particularly precise. Mobility. <laughs>